Good afternoon, traders. This is Christian from Earth Star Market Trade Group, and this is your end of day recap for Wednesday, September 4th. Risk disclaimer in front of you everything that we're going through in this video is for information purposes only, not giving in any advice or recommendations. Everything that we're going through is for information purposes only. So, um, for the day, and I need to update these uh, on the top here. Let me just do all right, so those uh, I just needed to update those numbers up here. Um, you can see that the VIX, uh, we'll kind of start with that one, did finish uh, higher. Um, so we're still staying pretty heightened in terms of um, volatility. You know, we know that, um, and I talk about quite often, one day does not make a trend whenever we have a big up move or big down move like we had yesterday. But um, there wasn't really any kind of change in the um, short. That said, it, there wasn't any change in the short term trend. Um, and, you know, we, this was said in um, the Tribeca Trade Group uh, trading room, uh, you know, a little bit before the close, which by a member, which I agree with, um, is that we just kind of burnt off some over oversold levels. You know, we were pretty oversold coming into the open today. So, you know, we had this bounce to about 11 o'clock today and um, there wasn't really much follow through. And here's what I'm referring to. If you look at the RSI, um, you know that we were pretty overbought. So we managed to kind of rally till about um so about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock hour, um, you could see that uh, sellers kind of reasserted themselves. And, you know, for the most part, you know, in, until we got to about 3.30, you know, and keep in mind that a lot of the algos that trade um, and not predatory algos, you know, um, sometimes that's that gets tossed around on Twitter. But um, just, you know, algos, for the most part, help traders execute orders. And um, sometimes, you know, there was an article that um, earlier today about um, CTAs. And, you know, I don't know if you want to blame the CTAs, the commodity tra trading advisors, um, which have turned um, incrementally negative who are selling, but there's somebody out there who's selling. And, you know, you can kind of see that when you look at, when you examine some of these five minute bars, you know, so take, for example, um, when you look at, you know, how this transpired, you know, like I said, we, we rallied till right up until about 11 o'clock and then we started to kind of push lower, but you could see a couple of times, like the, the buyers try to, you know, um, basically turn this market back up and you know when you're looking at a five minute bar if you're noticing how this works and you can look at this when you when you um look at a five minute bar and this is a five minute chart and the reason why i look at a five minute chart because it will give us the value area for the day right you can see that we snuck in there for the day but um we pushed right back out here but um that's one of the reasons why i, I use a five minute chart but it also just helps me see if there's if the buyers or the sellers are in control so when you start to you know and there's and there's algos that do this um that basically will kind of mark the mark the, the that particular candle meaning the first two minutes of a candle could be green like this one and then all of a sudden the last two three minutes of the candle there's more selling that happens to keep to keep this in the downtrend for the day. And, um, you know, they're just selling, you know, they just have a lot to sell and they're being, they're being kind of smart about it, right? They're not letting the market kind of gain any uh, traction. You know, they're, they're basically just, you know, holding it down and holding it down. And then a lot of times those algos are, they kind of uh, step away at around 30 minutes to the close. And then you could see that, you know, so that's my little story about why, why this transpired like this It's just, you know, and again, I know folks always want reasons, but it, there's just more sellers out there right now. And, um, and that's why we're not really able to kind of make uh, much traction. And, um, you know, again, it, it, it has to do with, um, you know, a little bit of, uh, go back to, of course, September seasonality, but, um, but that's but that's a situation, you know, that's always it's always that I'll say always. But a lot of times in September, we just have a lot more sellers, a lot more selling pressure than buying pressure. Right. And um, and that's just what it kind of felt like for today. So unfortunately, um, you know, going back to uh, the conclusion for the day is just that uh, we hadn't we had a little bit of a short term oversold bounce and not much follow through. And you can kind of see where we are in, here in S&P futures. Um, we're continuing to kind of stay below the five period moving average and the short term trend long term trend is higher but the short term trend for now is down a bit cues 
Um, we could look at this as well. Um, you know, in all three of these, the S and P, the Q's, and IWM all finished down about twenty basis points for the for the day. Now they did finish off the lows. Um, you know, and that's why you have a green candle for for the day because uh, you know, and and I think if you look at this one hour candle. Um, sorry, if you look at the one hour chart, we did take out that VPOC down there. There isn't really one nearby for the S&P. So that's what makes it a little bit different. But we bounced off this VPOC. Now the question is, can we stay above it? And that will be a good level to watch for tomorrow, which is right around 459. Right? But again, same thing. The trend is down here. Let's just see if we hold that. And if we don't, then I think the next place down for support um, is going to be about 2.6% down, and that's the bottom of the value area for the month, right? And that's where, um, looking at this, that's right down here, right? And again, uh, you know, overall, you know, when you put these things in perspective, I don't think that that's the worst thing in the world, that we go down and visit that. And if we hold down in here, that would still be... Uh, a higher low that's being put in so you know we just kind of have to wait but i i don't think there's anything that was really terribly um that you could say that's too positive um about this you know um here's iwm holding above the 50-day moving average yes the bear this now says bearish 80 percent rule but i would watch the 50 and the 20-day moving average i think if that breaks then maybe you can um, look to fulfill for price to fulfill the rest of the uh of the down move in there. Um, not a lot of great earnings reports after the close today. Um, we'll bring up the down movers first. Um, you have AI, you know, I get, I think very symbolic for what's going on right now. I really believe that this AI trade is coming undone. And I believe that also, um, it's, I believe that it's something that kind of needs to happen. I, so I'll insert my opinion here. I don't think that this AI, um, fad that we've had uh, i think that we've there's always been ai right and i just think it's gotten much more attention and about people uh, you know folks kind of scaling up but um but overall I, I like i know some people are saying oh it's such a big game changer and so forth you know there's always tech technology has always been there there's always been continuous improvement and new products and so forth and i'm not saying that that's not going to happen but i just don't think it's i think it just continues to we that we continue to get better products over time um, more efficient products but do i think it's it's this big leap towards ai no i don't um but i think there will continuously be improvements such as our artificial intelligence and so forth so i i actually welcome this a bit that this AI trade is coming is unraveling a bit right and of course you know this is just one company that you know adopted the symbol AI but uh I just think that's that's going it's being like a repricing in terms of um uh, what's happening but again that's my opinion you could disagree with me um it's okay to disagree with me that's why that's what makes a market is we all have different opinions but I welcome the sell-off in tech because I I think that it's overblown and that's what happens with a lot of um that's what happens with a lot of trends and stories is that it does get a bit overblown and it gets overhyped. And, um, you know, just like you've seen in stocks like CM, CMCI and, and things of that nature. Here's your here's your um, names that are up a bit. Yext is up. Also, Top Golf Callaway is up as well. Um, I wanted to go over just a couple names, right? I know Tesla's getting a lot of attention. You look at this Tesla chart, um, you know, so... I think um, it's starting to look interesting. Um, and, and you know, that's a nice move for considering what the market did today. But we know that sometimes Tesla acts a little bit different than the rest of the market. You know, I, I, was, be, I was witnessing that behavior months ago where a lot of the magnificent seven names would be down and Tesla would be up. And sometimes vice versa. It's all of the magnificent seven names would be up except for Tesla. Um, what I would watch here, so for, so this is how I kind of define things, right? Is that we're trading inside the, the value area for the month and I would get more bullish uh, above 224.64. Now I do have a position in Tesla. Um, I have a position in the TTG trend portfolio, but I don't have a position in my trading account because there's nothing that's really technically telling me to get long in my trading account. For longer term, we're still in value for the, for the whole year. Um, we held this support. We bounced nicely off this VPOC. And again, it's a nice day, but I think, um, you know, and 
I see when everybody gets bulled up on Twitter, but I, I hope people are selling into that because that's the way that this stock has been trading is there, you know, over the last couple months, you know, besides this move up, um, it's been a lot of starts and stops. Now, it's not to say that you can't make money from that, but you've also you have to be selling into the rips. Um, because you just don't have anything in terms of trend. And I'm a trend trader, right? And it's very simply, and that's what the value areas help me do, is to try to tell me when um, when something is kind of changing its characteristics in terms of trend. So, you know, it can be, you know, it's a really nice move, but right into the 50-day moving average. Also, when you examine closer, which is what we do, we examine things, we just came in and took out the VPOC. So we're just back to where we were last week, right? So uh, sorry, I, I know so many people, I guess, do a really good job at selling these moves. Um, and I'm just more of, uh, you know, I tell you what, <laughs> what the price action is in front of you. And, um, you know, so again, I would love it if it would make a move maybe above last week's highs or the, or the week higher. But, um, you know, if, if you're buying these low levels, you know, if you're, if you're really buying the, um, the ugliness, uh, you're getting rewarded. And really that's been a, for, for growth stocks, right? That's been the key, I guess, to some of the growth stocks is really buying, um, some of the you know moves to the bottom of the range where nobody wants to, to have anything to do with it. Um, and then you get rewarded and it pops, but it doesn't go anywhere after that. And you know again, we could look at several charts and you know of course, if we want to look at the cues, that's the way the cues have been trading too, right? And I went over that in yesterday's video, but um, you know it's not, doing anything magnificent, you know, and, and again, here's, and again, I know this is beating a dead horse at this point, but this is something that's trending. Now, again, it's really overbought. Would I be buying this here? Absolutely not. The RSI is well over 80, but this is what we want to see stocks do, right? Is come out to new highs, pull back into support, come out to new highs, pull back into support, come out to new highs. I don't want to deal with, you know, in my opinion, I don't want to deal with a range bound name. So I just kind of give you a little bit of color here. Some names that I thought were interesting today. And, you know, I did add a couple trades today. I mentioned in yesterday's video that, you know, think about going after some names that you have conviction in, right? That you know that you're going to be able to stick in a little bit in this volatility. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do anything in Costco today. Um, but I already, I have a position on it, both my trading account and, uh, the TTG trend portfolio and it did okay. I mean, again, it's nothing to kind of jump up and down about and, um, so on and so forth, but it did make it inside the, you know, inside its value area. So for now it's a longer term position for me. And, um, you know, this at least is holding above Now notice the difference. Here's the 50 day moving average. It's above the 50 day moving average. It's also above the 20 day moving average. So again, it's showing a little bit of overall relative strength. I know this is this is not a this is not a name to trade um, because it's seven hundred seventeen hundred dollars, but that's a heck of a nice candle for the day. That's a nice bullish engulfing. This is one that you know for like a long term portfolio because the bid ask spread is just too wide in this thing. But it's a really nice trade in this Fair Isaac uh, FICO. It got a good rating yesterday, and it held in there for the majority of the day yesterday. But it did succumb at the end of the day um, to the overall uh, pressure. Um, Kava. I think this is an interesting one to, one to watch. Um, it was up 1.8%, trying to regain here, trying to hold this um, earnings gap and um, and maybe start heading higher. But notice you will have some resistance there at 117.39. Um, ONON, um, this is another one. I don't know who sold this thing down to 42 or if you managed to buy this thing at 42. Uh, congratulations uh, to you because that's kind of a stupid move. Uh, but I think this is interesting how it's kind of holding in here and, um, you know, putting this one on my watch list. Also putting on my watch list is a firm. Um, uh, you know, now that it's kind of come in and I have this on in the TTG trend portfolio, I don't have it on in my trading account right now, but I'm just watching. And, you know, again, some of these things you have to be a bit patient with.
Um, here, I think, was kind of the stock of the day until about this afternoon. But the stock at one point was up. Uh, was it still up? Uh, was it up 12 percent? Uh, I guess it was. But again, you know, these big pops and these momentum names, you got to be, in my opinion, you know, selling some. You don't have to sell maybe all the, the whole portion. But when you get a move like this, um, really nice to the upside, I think that you want to be at least at the very least trimming. So very nice Um move in there. What else was I going to cover? Um, you know, one of my favorite stocks, I, this is one of them that I did add today. I'm not going to go through everything that I did today, but this is FTAI. Again, it probably will take some more time, um, but for now, it's holding where it needs to, right? And that's above the um, the September value worry. So the level, the first level of support that I'm watching is this 117 level. And again, I'm not saying that'll go right back up to new highs, but maybe it begins to build here. Um, it's been a really strong trend. I'll leave it there for now, guys. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.